here we have a DFC328 carburetor for a Subaru Justy, the second gen. And this carburetor has issues with the shaft here. There's too much play here and there's a massive vacuum leak. Let's see, you could probably You can see how much it moves there, that butterfly plate, and that's the source of a massive vacuum leak I've been having on the main one. There's a little bit. So I'm just going to remount the two bushings with this special tool, It is a reamer kit that you can get off of Amazon. It's, um, I forget what size the, the shaft is, I think it's like 5 sixteenths perhaps, but I'll, I'll look it up and give you guys that info. So first thing I have to do is detach the throttle body off the main body of the carb. So we have to detach a few of these linkages. So we start with this one.
So that's everything on this side. And over here we have to remove the spring or just unclip it. remove this piece right here these three screws here oh that was not tight at all oh, same with this one so this carburetor did come from this place called National carburetors. So this is a refurbished unit. I'm guessing all they do is just do the internals and don't touch the, the shafts here. carefully remove this. Don't want to damage any gaskets under there. Or... Am I missing something? Oh, gonna remove this vacuum line. throttle body. Put this to the side. That's the one I'll be doing first. I think this is the secondary. All right, so we will remove butterfly valve, butterfly plate. when you're reassembling this is to put the the uh, butterflies back in the same orientation they came out so I'll rotate this I'll push up on it I'll pull it out and try to make a note that it came out like this
And as for this side, all you need to do is disassemble this end. You don't have to touch anything here. So we will remove this 12 millimeter nut. Try to remember the order of all these things. I'll just pull it all off at once. Okay, so from here, you can just remove the screws. Okay, so it, oh geez, I think it fell out like this. Okay. Uh, all right, so now that that's out, you can just pull the entire shaft out. Same thing with the other side. So this bushing here is super long. Um, the other carburetor that I did, I just cut off the extra length of the bushing. The spring was able to uh, hold itself in place with everything compressing it so I'm not too worried about that um, you'll need snap ring pliers to remove that From here, I would just cut this flush. There's a little bit sticking out, but that's fine. Okay, now you'll get your reamer. And here, I'm gonna do the larger barrel first, so 
just drop this in. And you could hear all the play. So we're going to put our drill on this end and we're gonna spin it counterclockwise from here. We don't wanna grab it from this end because you want this to be as uh, uniform as possible. So we'll just grab it from here. Plug in the drill. Oh, another thing I should mention is the depth that you should be cutting to. You want to cut about this much. So that should be perfect. Let's let the drill bottom out. I wish I had a vice. So now we have a, an enlarged hole. If you want to clean it out with compressed air, brake clean or whatever, and then you'll press this in carefully. So the way I've seen some people install these bushings is by using a washer. Here we have a lock washer, but that should do. You slide it onto the reamer, get the bushing, um, I do the longer side down, so this should fit pretty tightly on the shaft, like that, drop it in, and then you just give the reamer a whack. Give it a whack until it's fully seated. Seems to be going, seems to be going in straight. Just give it some more wax. It's almost seated. I'm gonna have to pop this out. Hopefully. <laughs> oh no, the reamer is stuck.
Jesus. This thing is very stuck. Burning my hands. It's almost out. Got the reamer out, but it, I didn't seat it all the way. Inside, you can still see a little gap, so I'm just gonna give it a few more wax with the dead blow. Oh, that's gonna make everything fly. Uh, let's bring the camera down here. So it is seated all the way. I didn't drill deep enough, but I have it in. Only did one side. It's it's a little tight, but we have to do the other side now. drill this one out although I did go all the way through which is not ideal because you want this curve in that bushing so I just won't uh, put it in all the way so I'll go ahead and do that here's what not to do don't tap it in too far that would not have happened if I didn't drill all the way through, but I should be able to push it out somehow. Okay, I was able to push it out. I just used a screwdriver and I just pushed on it. It's sticking out quite a bit, but we'll do a test fit. I think it goes in this way. Okay, so here it's way too tight. Like, I could hold the entire thing. It's supposed to be, you know, uh, free rotating. But it's really tight. To fix that, you can get the reamer and just run it in. It could also be that the lip is bent in and causing friction on either side. So I'll go ahead and get the reamer in try to loosen that up a bit. It was so tight, I managed to push the bushing out. <laughs> Whoops. A little too far.
So I went ahead and put the shaft back in and now it's a bit looser. Still lines up in some spots, but that should be okay. So now we could put the butterfly back in. Make sure you put it in the same way it came out. Okay, I'm gonna reinstall the butterfly plate. So if I remember correctly, it was like that. This came out through the top. Push it in, try to get the holes to line up. There we go. And you want to make sure it seals. So I'm just gonna rotate this a bit like that. And like the plate will shift as you put force on this. And that's where you'll add the screws. You wanna add a little bit of Loctite to that. Fortunately, I lost the screws, so I'm using these cap screws. It is M3 by 0.5 millimeters, I believe. Just add a tiny bit of, oh, that's a bit too much. That's way too much, or just enough. It's not ideal. Oh well, that's about a tenth of a horsepower loss right there. All right, so it's time to do this one. I'm gonna drill all this out and then I'll show you how to reassemble all of this. Here's another one I just drilled out and installed the bushing. All right, time for the last one. Doing the last bushing. It's all drilled out. Here's the bushing. There's a little bit of resistance, but it's it should be fine. The return spring will easily hold that, and there's absolutely no play. So let's put this back together. You'll want to, of course, clean as best as you can. Don't want any of that to get into your engine.
for tightening all the way, I would force it closed and then tighten them. So I suppose that's fine. That's just the idle screw holding the butterfly open. Actually, I, I want to be 100% sure I'm going to fully loosen the idle screw and close the plate all the way just to make sure that the screws are in, in the right spot. Loosen these, tighten it. Then I'm just gonna back out on the idle. Let's do it all the way. So there it's fully closed. With it fully closed, you know, force it. Force it shut. So now, if you look at the light, there's a lot less coming through. So let's go ahead and tighten that. Okay, we're gonna reassemble the throttle body. So first thing is the spring into the little hole here. And then you have this thing that looks like a hammer of sorts. That needs to go in between here. Then we'll put this little washer and the lock ring. Yeah, but we're, we're leaving out this part of the bushing that we cut off. And then this thing, mine stamped with a 109. Whatever that means, put that on. So far, so good. Then we have this spring. It's three components. We have this lower piece that goes on. This cylinder that goes inside that lower piece. We'll go ahead and put the spring over all that. And then this upper piece. And then we get this part. Lock washer and the nut. And we will tighten that up. Okay, seems to work. So let's get so I 
needle screw goes through the hole. And then this piece needs to rotate so it meets up there. Okay. Go ahead and plug in your vacuum line. Now your three screws. So the spring over here needs to go back on the peg and it needs to have spring tension. So it might be easier to undo the nut, spin it all around and make it fit. So I'll just do that. I'm just gonna put this on the little stud. And then I'm gonna remove this piece, hook it on the spring, and give it like half a turn. There we go. So that's under tension. Go ahead and get all these linkages back on. So, let's try to get the this is the accelerator pump linkage. So that needs to go in first. is the linkage for the choke. Or it might have them backwards. Now, I need to make it fit. I'm going to have to rotate the throttle body. There we go, open up the pulley a little bit. There we go. We'll get the little E-clip.
the paper clip. That's your pole. Gotta make sure everything works. Seems like it works. Here's the idle up solenoid. Cool.